Hello everybody, we're here in Silver Lake, California at Logan's Gardens. Today we're going to be meeting with Logan Williams and Jimmy Williams, the co-author of the book I'm holding in my hand called From Seed to Skillet. I did it myself, I seeded it, and did four flats, right? Frass, right? Only frass on it. And uh, normally we would give up on, you know, if it, it takes longer than like 15, 18 days to germ, uh -huh. we'd say, well, that seed's bad and you throw it out, uh -huh. right? But we didn't, we kept, we held on to it, kept watering, and then we started to see it, and then we said, well, let's see what happened. And this is what happened. Awesome. So we didn't waste the seed. Uh, I don't know what happened, <laughs> but the only thing we put on it was frass. Nice. Right? Well, it's, it's kind of a common thing in the nursery uh -huh. that, uh, you know, some of your plants get root bound, but you try to save them. You can cut them back. There's various things you can do. Uh, so we've never had luck with cutting dill back and having it come back. Right? So we tried different things. So the first thing we did, it was like we cut it back, we put it, gave put it in a larger pot, but instead of the four inch pot, we put it in the six inch pot. Uh -huh. And we put some worm tea on it and we figured that would work. And it didn't, it just sat there. And I said, well, let's, let's try the frass. So again, we cut it back. We put it in a larger pot and only gave it frass, right? But like two heaping teaspoons of frass in a six inch pot. Okay. And it came, as you can see, it came, this is what happened from the, from the cutback. Add a little bit more potting soil around it, put the frass around it, because th this way the, the, the frass is gonna colonize the root area on the side also, okay. right? And then you put the rest of your potting soil back in it and add a little more frass on the top and that's it. Here we are at the transplant station with uh, Logan Williams. This is Jimmy's son. Thank you for joining us, no Logan. No problem, anytime. Uh, Logan's gonna walk us through the, uh, the cutting of the dill and the transplanting of the dill with the frass. So, Logan, uh, if you could take it away and no show problem. us uh, what you do to sure, transplant. Sure, just gonna show you how easy it is to apply frass. It's okay. really, really simple. Great. All we're gonna do is just get our pot together first. Grab ourselves about an inch of soil. That's gonna be our first step of your good organic potting soil mix right there. Just gonna put about an inch in there, make it really simple. And this is when we're going to first apply our frass. We're going to take ourselves about a half tablespoon of a uh, heaping half tablespoon of frass. Just pour that guy right in there. Just going to mix it into the soil, agitate it a little bit. That's all set. And then we're just going to prepare our, our uh, slightly uh, distressed dill here. Just going to tr uh, chop off some of the basic, uh, I should say some of the bottom uh, older leaves down here and just get that all off. So you can see when the dill starts getting weak, the, the lower, it looks like the lower branches are starting to wilt a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's, it's basically what's happening is the plant is becoming root, root bound because it's been in this smaller pot for just too long. Uh -huh. And what's happening is it can't uptake the nutrients anymore from the soil because it's just run out of room pretty much. Okay. So what we're gonna do it is give it a new home basically. So what we're doing is we're just gonna cut it back and we're going to leave the smaller baby leaves that you're gonna see in a second down here towards the bottom. Now don't waste this dill or whatever plant you're gonna do. Uh, what you're gonna do is just chop that, take it in the fridge, take it inside, use that for later, have had it. I'll and be, now I'll be taking that home with me. <laughs> no problem. And now what you got is basically what we're gonna be planting again. So you've got your new preparable dill right here. We're gonna pop that right out of the pot. You see the roots have been in there for too long. That's why they're all compacted like that. So now we're just gonna apply it right there into our pot. Just set it right on top of set that one right inch of in, potting soil. Yeah, that he's already got the nice base and foundation all set up for him. We're gonna take a little bit more soil. Just like so. Just putting it into the sides, obviously, of the, uh, the larger planter. Yep. And now we're gonna apply a little bit more fresh, which gives us about a total of a full tablespoon in there. A little more, actually. Can't really... So can't really do too much on the frass. It's one of the best things about it is it really doesn't burn or harm the plant in any way. So you, you found you can't really overuse it? No, it's really one of the most gentle fertilizers we've ever used, which is just great. Love that. And what's gonna happen... Gentle and powerful. Yep, yep. We like that combination. Yep. And then the same deal, we're just gonna agitate it a little bit, mix it into our soil that we added in. Like so can't really harm it guys don't worry about harming the roots or anything like that they're pretty resilient and we're gonna take a little bit more soil and we are almost all frassed up here guys so that's it so a little bit of frass underneath the transplant site yeah a little bit of frass around the outer edges of the uh, the smaller one of the uh, easiest things I've ever had to use really 
and you guys are just about all set. And what's going to happen is the frass is going to hit those roots so quickly. I've, I've never seen a, a fertilizer really uptake that this quickly. The frass seem, seems to really affect everything very quickly. So once you've transplanted it, you want to hit it with some water yeah. and get that frass going. And, uh, and then how, how soon is this going to be a revived plant? Honestly, I've seen in anything as sort of seven to 10 days that some of the plants have been really uptaking the frass that quickly. Uh -huh. And you're going to see all these new baby leaves down here are going to be just as big as those guys in, in a matter of weeks, wow. if, like a couple weeks, if that. Okay. Um, yeah, and really is going to keep your plant going way longer than it normally would when we were using other fertilizers beforehand. Frass has just been so superior to everything else we've ever used here. That's great to yeah. hear. I always love to hear that. <laughs> so that it's that easy. Just uh, put a little bit of frass underneath your transplant site. Uh, put your transplant in there. Put a little bit more frass around the outside. Top it with some uh, potting soil, and you're ready to go. Yeah, That's this part it. doesn't stink, doesn't smell. Easy. You're talking about the frass? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because the dill smells really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That's a little transplanting lesson with uh, Logan Williams. And uh, let's go check out some tomatoes that aren't supposed to be growing this year, or at this time of year. Let's do it.